Hello, my name's Tom and welcome back to my channel where I talk a little bit about theatre, a little bit about being a PhD student and a little bit about those two things squished together. So today, the third episode of What the Theory, in which I look at the concept of cultural hegemony. I said at the beginning of this series that I might gradually spiral out from theatre into some wider kind of cultural and more general theoretical principles. And today, because hegemony is something that I've been working with in my writing and my research quite a lot recently, I wanted to talk about that. As always, ideas and suggestions are really useful. So if you have anything you particularly want me to do a video about, then do leave a suggestion uh, down in the comments. And if you want to watch more of these videos, then do subscribe. But here we go with episode three of What the Theory. The term hegemony stems from classical Greece, where the term hegemon was used to refer to a state, usually in this case a city-state, which held political and military dominance over others. Periods such as the Spartan hegemony and the Theban hegemony refer to times in which those particular city-states held dominance over all others. And for much of history, the term was used to describe this kind of physical, geopolitical control. In contemporary scholarship, however, the term has been developed to refer to control outside of the relatively simple notion of physical control. The theorist who is mostly to thank for this development is the Italian Antonio Gramsci. Gramsci was a key figure in Italian communism towards the beginning of the 20th century. As such, when Mussolini came to power, he was put behind bars and died after 11 years in prison. While he was there, however, he wrote extensively and some of his ideas and theories have been incredibly influential ever since. Hegemony, then, was a key component of what Gramsci described as his philosophy of praxis, alongside ideology and organic intellectuals. I won't go into the other two here, but essentially Gramsci used these three terms together to describe and analyse how social classes come to dominate society. Much like its use in classical Greece, then, Gramsci's conceptualization of hegemony is still about control. Particularly, he uses it to analyse how the bourgeoisie, the wealthy and the ruling classes come to dominate in a capitalist society. Gramsci's key development, however, was to acknowledge that such power and such control comes about not only through physical power, but also through cultural domination. To put it into a relatively simple contemporary example, we might observe that many media outlets and newspapers are owned by the incredibly wealthy. As such, they will tend to have an editorial outlook that will support political parties, policies and programmes which legitimise the existence of vast wealth inequality. These papers and media outlets, however, do not present this as one side of a many-sided argument, but as a simple, commonsensical world view. Gradually then, the idea that some should be incredibly wealthy while others struggle embeds itself in society to the point where those whom this kind of thought process actively harms will actively support it. Neoliberal capitalism, for example, is often presented as the de facto best way of ensuring technological progress and individual freedom. And so deeply is this idea embedded in contemporary society that we'll often find that those who face the more dark side of contemporary capitalism will also be vocal advocates for it. Cultural hegemony, then, is something which is often not clear to see, but hides itself within and beneath cultural texts. It's essentially the idea of a dominant group using culture in order to legitimise their dominance. To use a slightly different example, there was a time very recently where a family, as presented on television or in film, would always consist of a mother, a father and their children. Very few of these programmes or films made a big deal out of this. But, once we take them as a whole, and we realise that there is only this image of the nuclear, heterosexual family being presented on our screens, then we can see that this is presenting that this is what a family looks like, and this is only what a family looks like. 
Again, this is not an open political debate, but simply cultural texts supporting a certain status quo. Further examples might include many war films, where we often find the global north and global west engaging in military intervention in continents such as Africa or South America is often shown to be quite a good thing. Again, these aren't clear bits of political propaganda, but they do help to support that status quo. Gramsci's biographer famously described hegemony as predominance obtained by consent. In this way, we can see that cultural hegemony is the idea that power can be exercised and reinforced as much through cultural texts as through physical force. Hegemony is a key concept in cultural theory, as it implicates power and politics into cultural texts. It suggests that it does not necessarily have to be intentional, but that most works would either support or revoke a certain state of hegemony. It is the fundamental idea that power is not just exercised through physical force, but is also reinforced through the stories that we tell and the images that we make, whatever form they come in. Thank you very much for watching this episode um, of What The Theory. I couldn't manage to get in absolutely everything about hegemony into this short video, um, but I hope it's a really nice uh, starting point. There's some great articles um, out there which give a really good overview. Um, if you've enjoyed this, then please do consider subscribing or give it a thumbs up. Um, if you've got a suggestion for another video, put it down in the comments. Um, thank you very much and have a great week.